In part seven here of my Game Master series, we're going to look at and explore rounding up some players. You've got an amazing campaign. You've got your narrative set. You've reviewed the rules. You know the type of adventures you want to run. But we need to fill the table with players. And there's a couple of approaches in doing this. A lot's going to depend on your initial resources. So what I'm going to do is share with you some of my experiences over the years and the current situation that I'm in, getting ready to jump in, running Invisible Sun, populating the table ground zero with players. How exactly am I going to do this? Now, certainly, if you have a group of people that are interested in role-playing, there's really kind of two approaches here. This is your first venture into being a game master and running a system. Or you're already established playing something, uh, say like in my case, Dungeons & Dragons or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. And while you have a solid base, now you're thinking about playing another system or moving into an alternate type of gaming universe to play in. The crossover is not always there. So the easiest thing to do, and by easy, this would be the first step, but it's not always possible depending on your life situation, Is there a gaming store that can host you? Some gaming stores have an open play night. You know, Thursdays come in, 7 to 10 is RPG night, or maybe on a Saturday afternoon. The advantage that this has is uh, not only kind of neutral ground, but also bringing in a variety of players, a variety of interests. Uh, Perhaps the store even advertises through Facebook or word or mouth. That's the easiest way to find and recruit players, literally to kind of set yourself up and push things out that way. You can even talk to the store manager and say, you know, maybe they're playing other role-playing games or they're playing D&D and you want to play D&D also. Talking with the store manager and saying, I have an interest in running something. Can you connect me with some players? Have them help you do some of the legwork. Now, maybe that's not a possibility due to your location or your work schedule. So the next place is to look at literally your associates, literally your friends, and see if there's any interest in role-playing. And you would be surprised. Um, One of the best role-playing experiences that I had for a long, long time was years ago I was running a D&D Redbox campaign, classic campaign. And a couple of friends of mine were like, hey, let's do the, the D&D classic. We'll start out red box, you know, then we'll do the blue, then we'll move to the black, then we'll move to the green, and let's play some of these classic adventures that we missed the first time around. And I had another friend um, very involved in sports, very academic from that perspective. His personality, the last making a judgment, an incorrect judgment, but the last thing I would have thought was he would be interested in role-playing games. The tip off that I missed, he was an excellent musician. He was an excellent, excellent musician. He could, uh, well, he still is, but he could hear, um, he could hear a song, loved Queen, loves Queen. He can hear a song and literally recreate that song on the piano. Uh, Amazing, fantastic. I approached him and said, hey, myself and a couple other friends um we role play we play this thing called D&D, and uh, you're my friend I, I don't want to exclude you from it right it's an activity i don't want you to think if you hear about it uh, you didn't get an invite or you were excluded is this something you want to do and uh, the first couple of games were a little bit challenging it took him um, a hard time to kind of wrap his his mind around things his character he was playing a magic user and in my campaigns You kind of can do whatever you want. What do you want your character to be? How do you want your character uh, to look? So we played a very, very unique magic user. And after three or four gaming sessions, it it really kind of clicked in the rules and clicked in understanding and his creativity. And we played for years. We played for years. So if I just made the assumption of, well, this type of person or my friend here isn't interested, I would have missed out on a tremendous opportunity. Cast the net wide. Now, what that means and this is building on uh, the previous podcast in the list here, what this means is the first adventure or two should not be part of a campaign. It should be to illustrate role-playing. It should be to illustrate the mechanics and, and give people a little taste. 
approach it from the perspective of check out role playing. If it's something that you want to continue doing and you enjoy it, welcome to the game. If it's not, it's an experience you tried. It's something to kind of try out. Don't put any expectations on the people that you invite. Don't put any expectations on yourself. But you'd be surprised if you could get, and it could be running two groups, two or three invites, you could probably get three or four players on there for that. Um, Another way to kind of branch out, but now this depends on your player personality. This depends a little bit on location. Um, Informal meetups or gatherings, sometimes there's board gaming gatherings or role-playing gatherings. This is a little bit more public, so you're going to be meeting people that you don't necessarily know. They're going to have similar interests, but now, now you're dealing with two dualities here. Or I should say you're dealing with one duality. First, there has to be interest in the system that you're running on there. And second, you have to evaluate the player personalities of who might be playing in your game. Honestly, are you going to get along with them? Um, Friends of mine, when I invite them to play role-playing, that step two is already taken care of. I mean, we know each other, we get along, we're friends. So really the only hurdle is, do you want to play in this system or not? So we're, we're seeing some examples here of where and how to proceed with that. The next layer is um, what I call crossover. And by crossover, what that means is you see these hobbies um, in terms of wargaming, role-playing games, miniature games, action games, stuff like X-Wing miniatures, board gaming, other pursuits. The lines are becoming extremely, extremely blurred on there. They, they, They really are, and that's a great thing. And a lot of these... Um, hobbies like board gaming have gone totally mainstream. So what you'll find is in a, a board gaming group, I'm just using board gaming for example, but this could be war gaming, you'll find in a, a board gaming group, I bet you there are a number of role playing, role playing gamers there that you can bring in, that you can say, hey, I'm going to GM a game. Do you want to come in on this on there? And um, even if they are not role players, they're aware of, an RPG, being a board gamer. They're aware of certain narratives. They're aware of controlling a character. That's um, an interesting place to be. Invisible Sun. So my plan, I I feel okay for a first play. I've got a couple of adventure ideas on here. My plan is to um, essentially extend an invite to three to kind of three groups out there. And while I have the ideas of a campaign that I want to run and a series of adventures, um, I'm, still, I'm still a ways out. I'm kind of finalizing that and, and at least getting it into to playable status on there. But that doesn't mean I'm going to wait because the first couple of... Uh, this is an entirely new system for me. Entirely new. And this is something that uh, I normally wouldn't run, but the game world, the mechanics, the presentation, everything... It's hit every single thing on what I want to run. And I, and I usually don't jump into systems as fast as this on here, but it's really captivated that momentum. So I'm excited. I don't want to wait. Plus, there's a great way to learn the rules, and this was in part two in my Game Master series. Jump right in. Don't worry about right or wrong. Let's, let's run a couple of adventures. Let's run a couple of narratives, a couple of stories, and, and, and see what we can do on there. So I'm going to invite the guys from the D&D group. They're, they're just in. They're role players. They know me. Um, a couple of them, we'll see. I mean, I, I probably will be proved wrong. There are a few who I, I don't think the narrative will necessarily fit for them, but I could be wrong. There are a few that I think the rules they'll enjoy, but I could be wrong. But that's, that's kind of a pretty safe group. We get along. We play. We know of each other's commitments. And they have role-playing experience. So they're going to be pulled in. Then I've got some board gaming friends that really enjoy, really enjoy storytelling board games. So you'll see stuff like time stories. You'll see stuff out there that is, is narrative heavy where you have to make decisions. Essentially, honestly, it's a role-playing board games that are RPG light. So they understand the story, they understand the narrative, they understand character building. It might be a little bit complex to jump into a full RPG, 
but we'll we'll see how that goes. The third group are um, friends of mine that are outside of gaming, outside of gaming. I don't know them from board gaming. I don't know them from role playing. I don't know them from war gaming on there, but um, they share similar interests to me, certain metaphysical and new thought interests. I'm not a musician or a poet or a writer, but they are. So they're they're connected with that aspect of the mind, and I think they might be intrigued by the setting. I think they might be intrigued by the possibilities of the invisible sun. That's that's the big gamble. So I'm looking to kind of bulk up the D&D crew. We'll see what happens. I'm looking to bulk up on my fellow gaming friends. And then this third group will be kind of let's take a chance and see how things shake out. I have three. It's about 32 or 33 people that I'm going to invite. There's no way I can run a game that big, uh, even with the system. No way. So I'm going to break it up into a couple of different groups. We'll see who shows up. We'll see who doesn't show up. Um, I'll run it for about a month. I'll run these three kind of mini adventures on there. And then we'll see what direction things head in. So you've got your system. You're ready to go. Uh, The enthusiasm I have, I want you to capture that enthusiasm for your gaming system and jump in as a GM, as a game master, How are you going to get players to your table? 